Hello, and welcome to another episode of Full Court Finance here at Zacks. I'm your host, Ben Rains. And today we're taking a look at three nuclear energy stocks to consider buying now and possibly holding for the long term as the energy sector, especially the energy transition sector, could be starred by nuclear power. So today we're looking at Rolls-Royce, BWX Technologies, and Constellation Energy. But before we get everything, remember to subscribe and leave a review wherever you listen to your podcast, and make sure to check out our zax.com slash promo page for a look at some of our services, portfolios, and more. So before we jump into these three stocks, I want to do a broader overview of the nuclear energy space, just to give everyone a sense of why I'm so bullish and why Wall Street's become so bullish on the space in general and then the three stocks we're going to dive into today. So nuclear energy's ability to provide continuous carbon-free power made it one of the primary candidates to power a growing global economy if fossil fuel use is to be reduced over time. That's kind of the basic idea. Yet despite that reliability and game-changing potential, the nuclear energy supplied roughly 20% of the nation's electricity every year, so this is the U.S. since 1990, even as other sources expanded or contracted substantially. So it kind of was left to the wayside for the last 30 years, and and then we've seen a huge turnabout in the last couple of years. So until a few years ago, really, the plan was to slowly shut down many nuclear power plants in the U.S. as they grew older. Then the U.S. essentially and the broader um, world did uh, – a big 180 degree turn on the energy as key players across technology, finance, the government, heavy industry and beyond finally threw their collective force behind nuclear energy. So the first big highlight of the newfound commitment in the U.S. was in the Inflation Reduction Act of 2022. So the IRA essentially put nuclear energy on a level playing field with other clean energy sources while supporting current nuclear power plants and providing incentives to build new reactors and pursuing advanced reactor technology. The U.S. then in late 2023 headed up a coalition of countries from across four continents pledging to triple nuclear energy capacity by 2050. So that's a massive big push forward where just a few years ago you were hearing a lot of people, especially in the government, uh, not really talking about it much, even though they were talking big about the energy transition and slowly uh, moving away from fossil fuels. And now nuclear is going to play a huge, huge role in that. Uh, then in March, uh, we saw officials from 30 countries meet in Brussels for the inaugural nuclear energy summit to provide to figure out how to provide financing, technology, infrastructure needed to create what now people are seeing as possibly a nuclear energy-driven future. And then in July, early July, President Biden signed the Advance Act, which is a bipartisan legislation to help accelerate the recent resurgence of nuclear energy in America via numerous efforts. This includes speeding up the timeline for licensing, uh, cutting a lot of red tape because there's just – a lot of back-end stuff that makes it very hard to get these reactors off the ground. And if you are trying to slowly transition away from fossil fuels, you can't have these projects take decades and decades. So there's been a huge push in just the last several years alone from the U.S. government to finally get behind this industry after, as I said, as I said, essentially 30 years of complete stagnation. Nuclear energy companies are landing deals now with titans of – Technology, Microsoft, Amazon, and tons of other companies are turning to nuclear power companies to fuel their AI expansion, which is going to require tons of energy. So that's a big reason for this, too. So a lot of these companies have pledged to become so-called carbon neutral by various timelines. And without going all in on nuclear, it's going to be very hard to do that. So that's the big bull case broadly for that. And it's worth noting that uh, there's 60 new nuclear reactors being built currently globally, according to the International Atomic Energy Agency, and roughly 110 reactors are planned to start construction soon in many places. Uh, PitchBook noted that there was a 400% increase in nuclear energy investment between 2015 and 2022, which a large chunk of that coming in the last several years of that period. And overall, there's a bunch of different companies vying to power this space. At the moment, there's not as many 
publicly traded companies that the average investor can dive into. But there's tons of there's tons of different areas from uranium miners to next gen nuclear upstarts to established titans of heavy industry. And we're going to kind of look at a several of those uh, companies, but there there's more and more companies that are going to be starting to trade publicly in the coming years. But overall, uh, those are kind of the areas where people and Wall Street are starting to look at. And it's worth noting that uh, two of the six top performing S&P 500 companies so far this year are nuclear energy companies as investors are clamoring to buy the companies that will solely power the world going forward and the artificial intelligence age if all goes to plan at the moment. So the first of these companies we're going to dive into today is Rolls-Royce. Some people might think of it as a fancy car maker. Uh, they still do make fancy cars, but that's a very, very, very tiny part of their business. So the company trades in the ticker in the U.S., R-Y-C-E-Y. So it trades over the counter. If that scares you, it's okay. But if you look into it, it's, it's nothing too scary. They have a, a huge volume as well. So it's a stock I own personally and I own in the Alternative Energy Innovators portfolio. So Rolls-Royce is a historic engine maker at the cutting edge of complex power in propulsion solutions for aircraft, ships, and more. It is focused on a more sustainable future for its business, and the firm is at the forefront of small modular nuclear reactor technology. So you hear that's that SMR phrase you might see in headlines. Rolls-Royce is utilizing its expertise in nuclear propulsion systems to push forward the new age of nuclear energy. Rolls-Royce has designed its own cutting-edge SMR technology in what it calls micro-reactors. So they envision a future where SMRs, so those small modular reactors, power the economy, and then micro-nuclear reactors provide baseload power in isolated places, uh, as well as remote industrial locations. They even have, if you go on their website, the idea of maybe one day having these reactors on the moon and powering uh bases and civilization on the moon one day. So that's uh, their long-term goal. But at the moment, they just passed step two of a UK regulatory process to roll out uh, SMR technology in the UK. They're the only European firm to reach that milestone of companies that are trying to uh, get regulatory approval to eventually roll out their small modular nuclear reactor technology in the UK. Uh, they'll be able to achieve these lofty goals in this kind of growth segment of the economy, especially the energy economy, because they're finally revamping and streamlining their business to boost profitability, excuse me, uh, after a really disappointing decade, essentially. So a former oil executive took over as CEO in January of 2023 aiming to quadruple Rolls-Royce's profits in the next five years and complete other initiatives as well. So if we go back to August 1st, the company reported its first half of 2024 results and looked ahead to the future, and they they raised their full-year guidance, and then they also said they plan to reinstate their dividend, which was a huge boost to the stock as well. Rolls-Royce is projected to grow its adjusted earnings by 35% in 2024 and then another 19% in 2025 based on Zach's estimates at the moment. And this would come on top of 30% revenue growth this year and then another 7% revenue growth next year. We should note that since that report, its earnings estimates have trended higher for both 2024 and 2025. And its most accurate slash most recent estimates are coming in solidly above consensus as well. So this helps it Rolls-Royce land a Zach's rank number two buy at the moment. In terms of its stock price, it has skyrocketed over 750% off its 2022 lows, including a 155% year-to-date surge. It's trading, as I record this on Thursday, midday, it's trading at fresh 52-week highs of around $6.50 per share, which also is attractive to investors. It's a cheap stock, quote unquote, it's trading under 10 bucks, trading at $6.50. Uh, and it's strong first half report, as I said, is the reason why it's now trading at brand new 52 week highs, yet it's still trading 34% below its average sax price target. And best of all, it's still trading 70% below its all time highs. As I said, after a roughly decade long disappointment for the company and the stock. So it's currently trading solidly above its 21 day moving average, as I said, at new highs. So there could be a pullback in the near term. And the 21 day has been a level that it's tried to hold for the last year uh, with some obviously periods of sideways movement and some chop, but the stock's been on a really impressive run over in 2024 and off those lows. And on the valuation front, it's trading in line with its 10 year median. 
in near its industry at 24.9 times forward 12 month earnings. And five of the six brokerage recommendations that Zach's has are sitting at strong buys. So Rolls Royce is a, a low price stock that's going to be hopefully at the cutting edge of this new age of nuclear energy technology. And it also has a lot of other big parts of this business that aren't making it solely reliant on the quick rollout of this technology, which some of these other smaller companies are reliant on some of these uh, more like speculative nuclear energy stocks are. So Rolls Royce is kind of a, a good combination of both worlds where it's a big company that's betting on its future, but not the stock isn't totally reliant on this at the moment. And now we're going to move on to another company, and that is BWX Technologies, which trades in the ticker BWXT. It's another stock I own personally and have in the Alternative Energy Innovators portfolio. So BWX Technologies is a top supplier of nuclear technologies, components, and fuel to the U.S. government, including to U.S. naval submarines and aircraft carriers. It is actively growing, though, its commercial nuclear power segment in non-defense units. It's located in Lynchburg, Virginia, and its portfolio spans in general from clean energy, environmental restoration, space exploration, obviously aerospace and defense, and beyond. One of its uh, production facilities in Cambridge, Ontario, so in Canada, is the one of the largest commercial nuclear equipment manufacturing facilities on the planet. The company said recently that it's expanding that plant to, quote, support ongoing and anticipated customer investment in small modular reactors, traditional large-scale nuclear and advanced reactors in Canada and around the world. So that's where they see the, the commercial side going. And then in late April, the firm was selected as the first qualified supply chain company to join the GE Vera Nova nuclear supplier group, which is a, a new pub, relatively new publicly traded company when GE split off into three different publicly traded companies. The company in June then was awarded the second phase of a contract with the Wyoming Energy Authority to, quote, assess the viability of developing small-scale nuclear reactors in the state. It also has contracts with the Bill Gates-backed SMR company Terra Power, and it's helping provide nuclear systems and fuel for a first-of-a-kind first of a kind uh, nuclear powered spacecraft and that's with a uh, US government contract. So it's it's got a huge line of business all in the broader nuclear world and it's uh, going all in on the commercial side of the business as well while benefiting as I said from those continued government contracts and in the more aerospace and defense sector of the, the market. The company posted a beat and raise second quarter on August 5th, and the CEO pointed to the ongoing, quote, appetite for nuclear solutions across the security, clean energy, and medical markets as the reason for its increased optimism. BWXT is projected to grow its revenue by 6% in 2024 and another 5% next year to pull in $2.8 billion to help boost its adjusted earnings by 6% and 5% respectively. The company topped our earnings per share estimates for six quarters running, and overall its shares have climbed 250% in the last 10 years. This outpaces the S&P 500, which is up about 190%, and its industry is 110% climb. It broke out to new all-time highs after being rejected a few times uh, last summer, and it's now up 38% during the last 12 months and 30% year-to-date. At the moment, it's trading above its 21 Weak moving average, but slightly below its all-time highs from earlier this year. Uh, it got rejected from breaking above new all-time highs in July when it it failed to break out above its early March highs, and it's back above its 21-day moving average at the moment, trading at roughly neutral RSI level. So there could still be some more near-term legs for the stock before it reaches any uh, selling pressure. And overall, despite trading near its all-time highs. BWXT trades at a 50% discount to its highs in terms of its peg ratio, which is its uh, earnings outlook fa or factoring into its longer term earnings outlook uh, at 3.5. So despite trading near its all-time highs, its earnings growth outlook helps it. Uh, its valuation levels look pretty solid. So BWXT is another company that certainly looks worth considering as the broader commercialization in the next generation of nuclear power in the U.S. in a broad uh, gain steam. And the last company we're looking at is Constellation Energy, which trades in the ticker CEG. Constellation Energy is arguably the nuclear energy powerhouse in the US, 
producing roughly 10% of all the country's clean renewable energy. It is uh, its nuclear power facilities alongside its smaller hydroelectric, wind, and solar units power the equivalent of 16 million homes in the U.S. It's benefiting from the energy focus aspects of the Inflation Reduction Act, which essentially provides a price floor for nuclear power in the U.S. and helps it putting on a put it on a level playing field with other uh, clean energy sources. It's poised to improve its current nuclear power plants and then keep them running for as long as possible. It's also aiming to expand into next-gen nuclear through small modular reactors. The firm is also ready to grow through mergers and acquisitions and return more capital to shareholders via buybacks and dividends. So the company had been on a big tear and then in February of 2024, so this past February, it announced plans to grow its dividend per share by 25% in 2024, exceeding its 10% annual growth target. So that was a huge boost to the stock. On top of that, the company said it's targeting long-term base earnings per share growth of at least 10% through the end of the decade. It has bought back roughly 50 million, or excuse me, 500 million shares of common stock in the second quarter, boosting its total repurchases to nearly 2 billion so far. And it still has 1 billion, roughly 1 billion remaining of authority on its current plan to repurchase more stock. The company boosted its adjusted 2024 earnings guidance after it topped our Q2 estimates on August 6th, and it reaffirmed its ability to grow its adjusted earnings by at least 10%. Uh, through 2028 with its visible double-digit long-term earnings per share growth backed in part by the Nuclear Production Act tax credit. The company is expected to grow its adjusted earnings by 57% in 2024 and then 18% in 2025. Overall, Constellation shares have soared since its 2022 IPO following a spinoff. It's Stock is still up roughly 67% year to date and 80% in the past 12 months. And that's despite a much needed cool down from its highs. It, it got overheated along with many of these other tech stocks because, as I said, it's still one of the best performing S&P 500 stocks so far this year. But like a lot of these companies, it just got a little overheated. And it's still, as I said, up 67% year to date, despite falling around 15% from its May records. And this is after a big comeback off its 200-day moving average. It's currently, uh, as I record this on Thursday, facing some resistance at its 50-day moving average as it sits roughly neutral RSI levels uh, from well at oversold levels just a few weeks ago when the rally, the buy the dip rally started in early August after that big pullback. And then if we look at a longer term time scale, it's facing some resistance at its 21 moving at week moving average as well. Uh, in terms of forward earnings, uh, Constellation is trading at 21.8 times forward earnings, which is at 32% discount to its highs, even though it's trading only 15% below its highs in terms of its price. So overall, Constellation Energy is another strong nuclear energy stock to consider and one of the biggest players in the entire nuclear energy space here in the United States so far. So certainly these three stocks, if you're looking to get into what could be the dominant energy stores if we say look ahead 20 30 40 50 years from now uh these three companies we're looking at today could be big players in the nuclear energy era and wall street's clamoring to get into as many of these stocks especially as the ai boom continues so that does it for this episode of full credit finance until next time i'm your host ben rains and remember if you have any questions please feel free to shoot us an email over at podcast at zax.com this material is being provided for informational purposes only, and nothing herein constitutes investment, legal, accounting, or tax advice, or a recommendation to buy, sell, or hold a security. Do not act or rely upon the information and advice given in this podcast without seeking the services of competent and professional legal, tax, or accounting counsel. Publication and distribution of this podcast is not intended to create, and the information contained herein does not constitute an attorney-client relationship. No recommendation or advice is being given as to whether any investment or strategy is suitable for a particular investor. It should not be assumed that any investments in securities, companies, sectors, or markets identified and described were or will be profitable. All information is current as of the date herein and is subject to change without notice. Any views or opinions expressed may not reflect those of Zach's investment research as a whole.